I was just at the White House earlier today when the president was making those remarks, saying that he's going to have to wait and see about whether or not he gets on board with what you and your colleagues up on Capitol Hill are deciding. Should yeah. he? Yeah, I mean, we haven't even seen the final text yet. Um, we, we've, been in two, we've been in multiple meetings today. We haven't seen the final text of what the Democrats proposed, what the bipartisan look is for this bill. And we know that President Trump is doing his own markup right now. So we're just waiting. We thought we'd see it this afternoon. Uh, we're just waiting for the final bill to see what drops and to see what they actually gave us as a final number for uh, border security. $1.67 billion, about 55 uh, miles of fencing along the U.S.-Mexico right. border, in addition to a billion plus in terms of humanitarian aid, and no reduction in beds or the number of that's arrests. Right. So uh, that's well below, though, the $5.67 billion that the president had demanded for the wall. You coming from a conservative district, do you think that the president will be able to sell this to Republicans? Is this enough money? It's going to be difficult in my district. Um, a, a lot of our problems are pretty local with opioids and narcotics. I think we had over 1,200 overdoses uh, last year. And, you know, my district's huge. I think we had talked about it before. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than New Jersey. You know, it goes from Fauquier County all the way to the North Carolina border. So for me, I don't think it's enough. Um, I'm frustrated with the process right now. And in the meetings today, there's a lot of frustration because we don't know what that final sort of language is going to look like tonight. Is it going to be more? I think, I don't know if it was 1.37 billion or 1.67 mm -hmm. billion that we heard. Is it going to be more? Is it going to be more than 55 miles of fence? I don't know. So we'll see that. But that's going to be a very hard sell, sell to my district specifically. So if it's not enough for President Trump, do you think that he should still uh, take this money and also pursue declaring a national emergency? I would rather he didn't. I'm more of a, I would rather a congressional solution to this. And uh, we still have till Friday. So I'm hoping that we have some common sense going on here. In my district, I ran on three things, and one of those was border security, but it was comprehensive immigration reform. Before you do anything with visa reform or we look at improving E-Verify, we have to have a strong, secure border. In my background in counterterrorism and counterintelligence, there are ways that we can do this. So I'm, I'm finding this, again, as a, as a new member of Congress, frustrating because I don't see... I just don't see border security as being controversial. I want to talk trade. I want to talk commodities and, of course, your work on the Financial Services Committee. But one, sure. let me press you on this issue. Sure. Is it trending in the right direction that there's not going to be a government shutdown? I think it's still trending in the right direction yeah. based on the meetings I was in today. And I don't, I don't want to give any false hope or optimism. Yeah. I think that there's a moderate core of Democrats, and I believe that with the Republicans who are pushing this, I still think we're trending in the right direction based on the meetings I was in today. Because when you look at the uncertainty that this is factoring into how businesses and, and, and traders even to some extent are, are factoring this into their decision making, then you couple in trade policy uh, and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and USTR Bob Lighthizer heading to Beijing. Uh, I know you come from, you're a small business owner, a distillery owner. That's right. And these commodity prices in particular do impact that industry. What would you like to see the president do in terms of trade negotiations uh, with China? So if it is looking good, we, you know, my, my district's very agricultural. You yeah. know, timber and tobacco are still two of our top commodities. Uh, if you talk to the timber guys, they're sort of they're sort of okay with this. Tobacco, not so much. So I have a very interesting dynamic in my district and uh, in talking to everybody. I believe right now, though, I think we're on the cusp of a deal. I took a briefing last night. Uh, when they're looking at China's hurting more than you think, it's not over 6% growth. I believe they had a 12% sort of cut in uh, car sales, you know, over the last quarter. When I see this, even as a, a, you know, economics and also as an intelligence officer and look at this, I think they're coming to the table. I think President Trump's going to lay off on those next sort of tariff increases. You do. I do. Why? I do. I do. I think because I think we're close to a deal with China based on what I heard last night. Again, no false optimism here, but I think he is going to do well, that. Well, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, a lot of a lot of folks in the business community are, are very nervous about the March 1st deadline and the prospects of President sure. Trump raising tariffs. I'm nervous about it. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, for us, you know, if we even get an alcohol tote, we, we, we uh, spend about another $400. Also, we do have soybeans in our district, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there's a lot of things agriculturally in my district that I want to take care of. I'm all for free trade. I think we should have free and fair trade. However, I think we're to a point that we need to close the deal with the Chinese and move forward. Last question for you. Are there a group of Republicans in the House that are urging the president, pressing the president not to do that tariff increase on March 1st? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you're looking at, especially again, huge districts like myself. I'm in, a, I'm in an interesting dynamic here with, you know, I got Falkier County to the north that has government mm -hmm. workers. In the south, I'm, when I say agriculture, as you know, if you're used to Halifax or Mecklenburg or Pennsylvania County, I have a massive agricultural sort of push that I have to take care of. Even with workers, uh, we have labor issues. So, I mean, there's 
so many interesting issues that I have in a district bigger than New Jersey that I have to look at that I'm one of those are pushing. Let's let's get let's get something done with China right now and and uh, let's move forward on this trade policy. And on USMCA, I mean the prospects of that NAFTA 2.0, you think it's going to be ratified? I think it is. We actually met with some. <laughs> this is it's been busy. Um, I met with people yesterday. We're getting a we're sort of getting an in depth look in depth look um, at USMCA and we're gonna we're gonna take each piece of it and look how it actually affects each district. I think it is. Uh, I think it's a good first step. I don't think it's the final solution, but I think it's a good first step towards fixing our trade policy.